This is part two of the configuration required for the router basics lab. The uh, last part of the lab, one of the last parts of the lab, we are going to uh, reconfigure our router for inner VLAN routing. Essentially, instead of having two uh, links from our router to the same switch, we're going to replace that with one trunk link that traffic from multiple VLANs can go across. And then we're going to reconfigure our router to uh, be able to understand the information coming across the trunk link. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the IP addresses from the uh, fast Ethernet interfaces. We're going to use the no IP address command for that. Then we're going to disconnect the uh, router connections from the switch. Then we're going to go back and create sub-interfaces on the router on fast Ethernet 00. We're going to create sub-interfaces by typing in the command interface fa0 slash 0 and then dot and we're going to put some number. Uh, I'm going to put 10 because I like to make my sub-interface number match the VLAN I'm using to try to keep me from uh, being confused. Uh, once we do that, we need to set the encapsulation type. The encapsulation refers to what the trunk link is doing. And we need to tell it which VLAN is associated with this sub-interface. So I have put uh, 10 uh, for the sub-interface. And then I need to give it an IP address. And I'm going to give it the same IP address it had before for VLAN 10, which was 0 0.1. I'm going to verify my settings. So it shows up and down. I don't have it connected to the trunk port yet. So once I get the other sub interface configured, I will connect it to the trunk port and then uh, hopefully everything will come up. The other sub interface I'm going to make 20 because I'm using uh, VLAN 20. I will show you something that many of you may do in the lab. If you try to set the IP address before you have configured the encapsulation, it will not work. It will give you an error. It says, hey, that needs to be configured for encapsulation first. So I will now do the encapsulation command specifying VLAN 20 and now I will be able to put the IP address on that port. So uh, that um, is the end of the changes to the router config, I believe. Now I need to connect my router to my switch and configure the switch. I'm going to connect it to port 24 just because I like to do that. And now I'll go into config and configure interface fast ethernet 0 slash 24 to be a trunk with the command switch port mode trunk. So it says it's up. Check the setting on the PC. You may have noticed I'm, I'm using this do keyword that lets me use the show commands from within uh, config mode. Normally if you try to, to run a show command within config mode it says you can't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. But if you put do in front of whatever command you're trying to do that will let you run it. So now if I look my uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 0 0.10 has an IP address shows it's up and up and my 0 slash 0 0.20 has an IP address and shows it's up and up and now I should be able to ping uh, between my VLANs again. Maybe I should just try to ping the router interface first again. Oh, hey, it works now. Look at that. That's so awesome. So uh, that was the first part of the inner VLAN configuration. But now I want to borrow. I want you to borrow one of your neighbor's PCs, right? Connect it to your switch and router, 
and make the inner VLAN configuration work between that. So I'm going to grab another PC. I'm going to make it have the IP address 192.168.2.2. I'm going to set the gateway to 192.168.2.1. I'm going to connect this PC to VLAN to a port. I'll use a uh, 20. And now I'm going to go configure that port to be in VLAN VLAN 30. All right. So now that switch port is in VLAN 30. A useful command on the switch is do show VLAN brief which you should remember from last week. So that shows my switch ports and the VLANs are in. If you'll notice, 24 is not showing up anywhere because that's a trunk interface. So a good command to look at your trunks is show int trunk. It says, oh, hey, 24 is a trunk interface. Perfect. So now I need to go back to my router and I want to create a new sub interface, uh, fa0 slash 0 dot 30. Since I created VLAN 30, on the switch. I need to do the encapsulation command and I also need to give it an IP address. Nope, not 30.1, 2.1. Uh, and I believe that is it. So now I have my new sub interface showing up uh, and everything should work. If I look at my routing table, I have a connected route for that new subnet and now from this PC I should be able to ping some of my other PCs. Alright, that was the router interface and now I will ping uh, 0.2 all right, so that concludes the configuration portion of this lab. The last thing I want you guys to do is to use TFTP to copy the configuration from your router to your PC. Uh, on your PC, you will start the TFTPD64 program. I will help you if you need help with that. But then once you start it, you'll essentially, from the router, will do the command copy. copy, run, TFTP. It's going to ask you the IP address of your TFTP server, so you'll give it the IP address of one of your hosts, the host that you started the TFTP server on. It'll ask you for the destination file name. You can just leave it as the default, hit enter, uh, and it'll try to write the config to the TFTP server. In the lab, this will work because you will actually have the TFTP server working. I do not have the TFTP server working, so that will not work right now. It's going to time out eventually. Uh, that's the last part of the lab. So on the router, you can simply power it off since we did not uh, save the running config. Switch, we did not save the running config either, uh, but you want to clear off the VLANs. So you'll use the command erase flash colon VLAN dot dat to get rid of the VLAN database on our uh, on our switches and I think I should have used delete not erase so don't use erase use delete yeah delete flash colon VLAN dot dot yes confirm so now the VLAN database was deleted so if I reboot the switch uh, reload the switch reload the switch when it comes back up uh, the VLAN database uh, will be gone.